Hi, my name is Vincent Rossillo, and I'm a partner in the law firm of Fine, Olin, and Anderman. And today, we're going to talk about the New York State Workers' Compensation Law as it relates to the coronavirus, and for those people who have been diagnosed with COVID-19 as a result of their exposure at work. During these very difficult times, we've gotten numerous questions about what people's rights are under the law. So we put together this short video to give you the very basics about your rights under the law. You may be entitled to other benefits in, throughout New York State or from the federal government, but today we're going to focus on workers' compensation in New York. One of the first questions that we get is, am I covered? And you should be aware that in New York State, with very few exceptions, every employee is covered for workers' compensation. This means even if you were working off the books, you were an undocumented worker, working off out of title, you would be covered under the workers' compensation law. Under the workers' compensation law in New York, every employer is required to buy a policy for their employees that protects them for workplace injuries. The employee does not contribute to this policy whatsoever. It is a benefit that must be provided to employees in New York State. And even if the employer fails to buy a policy, the worker is covered under the uninsured employer's fund. So you don't have to worry if you're covered, even if your employer did not buy a policy. And generally speaking, most people would be considered employees and entitled to this coverage in New York State. In fact, even volunteer firefighters and volunteer ambulance workers are covered under this law. So as a general proposition, almost everybody is covered in New York State. The next question that we get is, why file? What's in it for you? Well, people want to go the easiest route and they're inclined to use their private health insurance. And that would be not only a mistake, but it would be illegal in many cases. And by that I mean your private health insurance is not supposed to pay for work-related conditions. By definition, the workers' compensation law covers medically all expenses that arise out of and in the course of employment. So you don't want to use, try to use your private health insurance because if your private health insurance company realizes that this is a work-related condition, they will deny payment. You also don't want to artificially inflate the cost of your private health insurance. We all know that employers look to the cost and the expense of private health insurance when negotiating a contract or when discussing a raise or how much you should pay for, towards your premium in the future. So by artificially inflating that, by putting costs that should be incurred from the workers' comp bucket into your private health insurance bucket, you are artificially inflating those costs and making it more difficult for you, your coworker, or your union to negotiate a better contract or a more favorable benefit package in the future. So I know it may seem more difficult to use workers' compensation, but do not use your private health insurance for that benefit. You should use the workers' compensation benefit. Also, workers' compensation coverage medical, medically is a good coverage. You should understand that you're covered from day one. There's no waiting period for the medical benefit of workers' compensation. And there is no copay, no deductible. You walk into the doctor's office, you walk out of the doctor's office without paying anything. In fact, it's illegal for a healthcare provider to take money from you in a workplace accident. There are no lifetime cap on the type of treatment that you're entitled to, and you get reimbursed for traveling to and from your healthcare provider's office. And that medical coverage follows you even if you should change jobs, retire, move to a different state, that coverage is there with you. 
Also, that coverage is a lifetime medical coverage to that specific established site. So if in the future you should need surgery or more treatment or physical therapy or a medical appliance such as a cane or some kind of a breathing device, that will be covered under the workers' compensation law. So for the medical coverage alone, it certainly is worth going through the workers' compensation system. In addition to the medical coverage, you're entitled to monetary benefits if you cannot work as a result of this condition. There is a one-week waiting period before you're eligible for money. However, that one week is waived if you're out of work two full weeks. And you do not have to miss that time consecutively. It could be a day or two here this week, a day or two there the following week. And when you reach that waiting period, then you are entitled to workers' compensation benefits. If you're out less than two weeks, you would get for the eighth day or the ninth day out. And you're entitled to receive two-thirds of your average weekly wage with certain set maximums. So you can check with us or the law to determine what that maximum benefit would be depending upon your date of accident or your date of disability, but it's two thirds of your salary. And that money is tax free. You don't pay taxes on the workers' compensation benefit. If you do use your sick time while you're out of work, that sick time would be restored to you on a pro rata basis, meaning that you would not get necessarily dollar for dollar time restoral, but you would get most of that time back depending on the award that's made to you. And if you're unable to go back to work because of this condition, you would be able to receive compensation benefits per week for a maximum of 10 years, depending upon the specifics of your case, however. We don't know the exact amount, but it is a maximum of 10 years. And if you should die from your condition, death benefits are available to your spouse or your children. If there isn't a spouse or any children, your estate is entitled to a $50,000 cash payout. Moreover, you also would be getting, um, your family would be getting reimbursed for funeral expenses and again, depending upon your location, that amount can change. So you have the monetary benefits, you have the medical benefits, and those benefits will follow you. The medical benefits and the monetary benefits follow you, even if you change jobs, retire, move out of state. You may be entitled to money even if you are earning less money than you were before your accident as a result of your worker's compensation injury. And as I said earlier, those benefits follow you. A workers' compensation case for monetary benefits, generally speaking, can be reopened within 18 years from your date of accident. So if a condition worsens or as a consequence of your exposure, you developed a relapse or another site of injury, your respiratory problems increase, you may be entitled to monetary benefits if you're unable to work as a result of this condition. And those medical benefits would be expanded to include those additional sites. How do you file? Well, you have 30 days from the date of accident to give notice to your employer. You must give notice to your employer within 30 days of the date of accident. If you've had what we consider an occupational disease, you have two years from your date of accident or the day you knew or should have known that condition was work-related to give notice to your employer. Even if you no longer work there, you still must give them notice of your claim. Under the law, you have two years to file a claim with the state of New York. You must file what we call a C3 form with the New York State Workers' Compensation Board. That form can be filed online or in the mail within two years from your date of accident or from an occupational injury, two years from the day you knew or should have known your condition was work-related. Now, I've mentioned the accident. I've mentioned an occupational disease. One of the things you have to remember is that under the workers' compensation law, 
you're entitled to the same type of benefits, whether it's an accident or an occupational disease. And what you may have noticed is the difference is the time in which to file a claim. So generally speaking, an accident is something that happens to you out of your employment, but it's an identifiable incident. You slipped and fell, you picked up a box, that will be an accident. On, in the COVID-19 coronavirus situation, that can be where you were going to a customer's house and that customer tested positive for coronavirus. You know the exact date, location of your exposure, that would be considered an accident. Or you work in a facility where you know you were exposed to a coworker or another patient on an elevator, for instance, or while you were in the, in the lobby and you were exposed to somebody and you know that they tested positive. Those are specific incidents that you can identify. If, however, you are a healthcare provider whose job it is to always deal with coronavirus positive patients and you don't know the exact date of your, of your exposure or the time of your exposure or the location of your exposure, that may be considered an occupational disease. That out of the course of your daily routine, your work activities, you were exposed to a number of patients who were coronavirus positive patients. So in either case, whether it's an accident or an occupational disease, it is vital that you keep contemporaneous notes and records of your exposure. Because I believe you will be testifying about these situations years down the road. And it's impossible to expect you to remember the details of your exposure years later. So as it happens, you should be taking notes of the date of your exposure, the time of your exposure, the location of your exposure, were there any witnesses, co-workers, the type of assignment that you were on. The more information that you can provide when it comes down to your testimony, the stronger case you will have. The workers' compensation law is a no-fault system, so the workers' comp judge does not look at whose fault this accident or exposure was. So you cannot be denied a benefit if you were not using your proper personal equipment or if you were working out of title. It does not matter. That's not a reason to deny you. If you had an exposure at work, that would be sufficient to file a workers' compensation claim. You cannot be denied because you were at fault. Or if it was someone else's fault, co-workers fault, it does not matter. You're still covered under the workers' compensation law and you should still proceed with it. Normally, you must obtain a medical report that gives a diagnosis, for instance, of COVID-19 and ties it to your work. So as if you went to your healthcare provider and said, on May 1st, I was exposed to coronavirus at work and the doctor notes that exposure and that diagnosis, that will be sufficient medical evidence. It may be sufficient with this disease to simply file a claim if you had an exposure, and you, a knowing exposure. So contact us for more information so we can discuss the details of your claim. But you, what you also should know is that although it's a no-fault system, it is what we call an adversarial system. And by that I mean that there is an insurance company and their representative taking care of your case from the beginning to the end. So you should seriously consider having someone on your side from the beginning to the end. It is not required that you have an attorney, but it's a good idea to have an attorney to protect your interest and you only have to pay an attorney if you are successful. If an award is not made, there is no attorney's fee.